Hello everyone, Brandon John here with gdntbasics.com. We have created a tap drill chart and wanted to go over with you how to use this chart. Let's first go over the purpose of a drill tap chart. So the most common way to produce an internal thread is to drill a hole and then use a tap to produce that thread. Uh, we refer to this as a tapping drill for the size of the thread that needs to be produced. There are classes of threads that we have to pay attention to, so um, our, they're gonna, we're going to mention this in a second, but the chart over here to the right, this is our wall chart for the drill tap chart, and this is going to be for uh, most commonly a class 2 thread. Because they're internal threads that we're talking about, uh, these are going to be class 2B. But for whatever your application is, you may need to go to the machinist handbook to pick out a specific uh, tap drill size for whatever class you're going to thread. So on this chart, uh, we provide the information that you need to properly drill and tap those holes. Again, um, this is going to be class 2B, so it's going to be the commons. Uh, the chart includes the values for the screw sizes, meaning uh, if you're looking at a quarter 20, if you're looking at a half 13, uh, you can go over to this chart and you can find each one of those sizes. And then it's going to tell you the proper uh, drill size or the drill bit that you need to produce, to produce that thread. Let's look at some of the general terminology that we use for threads uh, when we're trying to define them or interpretation from a print or even the manufacturer of threads. Up here in the top left hand corner, uh, for that diameter, thread has three different ones, major diameter, minor diameter, and the pitch cylinder diameter. Over here on the, to the right of that, we have an image here showing uh, each of those. Remember in GD and T that when we apply geometric tolerances to a tapped hole or a threaded feature in general, that it will apply to the pitch cylinder by default. If we want to change that, remember we have to put minor diameter or major diameter underneath that. That becomes especially important when your inspection process is putting in, if you will, a best fit pin and, and trying to find the orientation location of that best fit pin. Well, you're truly engaging the minor diameter there, so you need to specify minor diameter underneath that GDNT callout. Uh, going back here, threads per inch and the thread pitch. So when we're dealing with uh, inch threads, the threads per inch, we're, like we're showing right here, uh, it is the number of threads over an inch span, uh, a one inch length. When we get into metric threads, uh, that is the pitch itself, and that is the, the distance between uh, each one of the pitch, or, or if you will, from thread to thread. So both of them very easy to measure out, very easy if uh, using a pocket scale or something like that. If you ever have, if you ever have to just pick up a bolt, uh, put a scale on it. Uh, if it is a, if you think it's an inch thread, then uh, lay it out. Uh, put your scale either between two threads, like we're showing here, or at the top of one thread there at the crest, and measure over one inch. Um, start counting from the end of the scale over. Uh, but when we get to the metric threads, it's just going to be from one thread to the next. Uh, on this one, one thing that I do need to point out is that on our tap drill chart, the first thread that's called out for any given size is always going to be the course. And that is the default. The machinist handbook tells us that uh, as a best practice for all of you engineers or anybody involved with design, you should always default to the coarse thread first in your design, unless for some reason you do need a fine thread. So as an example here, a drawing says quarter inch on the thread call out. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the tap drill chart, you see that there's two options for a quarter inch thread. First will be a quarter 20 because that's the coarse. Um, right below that will be the quarter 28, which is the fine thread. So remember, we want to default to that coarse thread. On the metric ones, going to an M8, um, if you look at the tap drill chart for an M8, the first one listed is going to be an M8 by 1.25, and the second one is going to be an M8 by 1. 
So the default here is going to be that 1.25. So how do you determine a tap drill size? There are rules of thumb that you can use here. Um, for metric, we just simply take that, that basic diameter. Uh, we have an example here, M5. We subtract the pitch from it. That's going to give us a tap drill size uh, for inch. When we get to an inch, we have the, the good tap drill down there, 85%. Uh, for coarse, 90% uh, for fine, but you can go into the machinist handbook and you'll find all of those different classes of threads in there, whether you're going to go with a class one, two, or three, and determine exactly what your tap drill size is going to be. But we took um, all of those basic numbers that come from the machinist handbook. We've put that on this uh, drill tap chart here on the right, and it's a good reference, uh, print it out, laminate it if you will, uh, keep it handy, but these are all of the common ones, both coarse and fine. There are four unique tables on this drill tap chart. The first one are the drill sizes. So on this one, the table is gonna list all drill sizes up to one inch, and then uh, the most common ones from one inch up to an inch and a half. So it doesn't include everything in there from one inch to an inch and a half, but again, the most common ones will be in that table. Uh, the second one here, this one is the inch tap drill sizes. So if you're looking for an inch size, uh, go to this second table over here. It's labeled inch there at the very top. This table is going to be the most common tap sizes, uh, typically one coarse and one fine thread for each meaning each size, quarter inch, half inch, five sixteenths, whatever. And then this is going to range from a number zero all the way up to inch and a half. The third one there is the metric tap drill sizes. So on this table, again, labeled metric up at top, uh, this table is going to be the most common tap sizes. And again, typically one coarse and one fine thread for each. Uh, ranging from an M1.6 all the way up to an M39. And then the fourth one here is the pipe threads. We wanted to make sure we didn't leave that out. Um, on this table, it's the most common uh, MPT national pipe threads. These are tapered uh, from 1 16th all the way up to three inches. Now, for design engineers, um, one little tip here is that when you are trying to accurately model a pipe thread, uh, on your 3D model. Go to the machinist handbook, look that specific thread call out up in there, get all of the information there that you need um, to fully define that. Again, it's tapered. Um, this uh, tap chart here is not giving you diameters for tapers. It's just straight uh, drill through and then tapping. The, the actual tap is what's going to produce the taper. Um, so you're not going to get the information you need for modeling from this. So regardless of your role, um, there, there must be considerations when using our chart or any chart. And those considerations are really going to be the, the class of thread that you need uh, when you switch to harder materials. So these the, the values that we have here, they're a great roundabout number. Uh, most machinists are going to go right to these values that you see on the, the uh, tap chart here. Over on the left, if we take a look at that, it's table two from the, the machinist handbook or machinery's handbook, 28th edition for us. That's the one we're using. But uh, table two here, if we look at a quarter 20, um, up at top, we have classes 1B and 2B. And this is going to give us um, that min max um, for each one going through there. Notice that uh, in the values that they're talking about there in the top, those are based off of uh, the depth versus the diameter of the uh, the drill bit that you're going to be using. So you have to consider what class do you need. Um, again, up here at the very top, uh, for our drill tap chart, we, we took this information straight from the machinery's handbook. They state in there that these values are going to give you approximately 75% of full thread uh, to be produced. And what they mean by that is not depth of thread. That's the This is the actual thread form itself. Uh, that you're going to get 75% of. So keep in mind uh, that 
you have run out conditions. Those of you that are machinists, you know, you, how much is your drill running out? If you go into the machinist handbook, they even talk about if you use one of these drills, um, I, I pointed out quarter 20 here specifically, if you come over to the inch tap drill table and go down to a quarter 20, it says uh, use the number seven. So going back over to the drill sizes over here on the left um, in that table, if it's a number seven, we slide down here, we find number seven, and that is the drill size that we're going to use. It's a 201 or 201 thousandths. But like the machinist handbook says, uh, you have to be careful about that because drill bits themselves, they are considered roughing tools, um, not finished tools. So when we're really trying to zero in on a class of thread from the manufacturing world, uh, what it states in the uh, machinist handbook is we will probably have to ream that hole or circular interpolate that on, on our CNC. Uh, whichever way, the, the drill bit itself may cause too much tolerance, and you, you do have to take that into consideration. Um, from a design standpoint, uh, again, we, we love giving little uh, tips and tricks to all design engineers or anybody doing design work. When it comes to thread callouts on your drawings, uh, we really want to leave the tap drill size off of that. Uh, we want to put in the thread callout, uh, the class, and obviously the depth for the thread, if it's not a full depth passing all the way through, if it's blind, uh, we want to give that information on there. Like we talk about in our course, that depth symbol is going to tell you minimum perfect thread requirement, but leave the tap drill size off itself. Uh, we're going to let manufacturing determine um, from this information here, either from the machine handbook or from our tap drill chart and tolerances that they think they can hold. Uh, we're going to let them determine the true size that they're going to use based off of those classes. So we can always go back into the machinery's handbook. Uh, whichever edition you're going to use doesn't matter. I personally use a very old uh, machinery's handbook. Our company uses the 28th, but loaded up with information for very specific details uh, about threads. Pitch diameter is always one that we talk about quite a bit, but Remember, in the GD&T world, we're talking about pitch cylinder when we have those geometric tolerances applied. Okay, I hope this uh, helps out, clears up some things about uh, drill taps. Uh, do remember that the first value, like this one here for a quarter 20, uh, that first value, that is the coarse thread, that is the common one, and by default, those are the ones we're supposed to be using. Um, like I said earlier, if we need a fine thread on there, that's fine. Uh, we wanna make sure that we get the right tap drill size for that fine thread. We're holding the proper tolerances on this table here too. Um, that shows us where we need to be for our min and max in order to achieve that. So as long as we're following those rules, um, that's fine. But just as a, as a good rule of thumb, uh, most people are using a 2B and the drill tap chart is gonna be those values that you need. All right, thank you everyone.